Good morning. So, welcome to today's lecture. We were discussing the scalar coupling or J coupling uh, or spin spin coupling and we will continue discussing today. So, in the last class we were discussing uh, how the splitting happens because of two spins are in neighbor and these are connected through bond and then we went ahead in defining magnetically equivalent and chemically equivalent. We said that magnetically equivalent does not cross the splitting and chemically equivalent which groups have a same chemical shift and all those and then we moved ahead and looking at what actually is the uh, is the region for different coupling strength. So, we defined that uh, uh, spin spin coupling over one bond is called J1 and then if it is two bond coupling then it will be called like 2J. So, here is the number of bond and this is J is J coupling and this is also called geminal coupling. Now, three bonds coupling are called a vicinal coupling. So, that is denoted by J3 and long range coupling will be called like more than four bond they will call long range coupling and that is denoted by like as usual uh, N is the superscript. Now, we, we ended it here and we define the factors that affects the spin spin coupling. So, what are those factors? So, some of those factors that we listed out are the hybridization of the atom involved in the coupling. Uh, so, this hybridization is one of the important factor and then that also is somehow connected with what kind of bond angle is there between the spins. So, that also affects the dihedral angle. So, dihedral angle is between two planes and generally this is uh, very important in case of protein structure. So, dihedral angles also dictates the uh, strength of the coupling. And then the bond length like C C single bond it is there or double bond there that also affects. Today we are going to understand all these and if there is a substituent like if it is a lone pair or there is a pi bond or, or, or some electronegative group are attached that also affects the strength of the spin spin coupling or J coupling. So, that we, we will be discussing today giving some examples. So, let us start the one bond coupling. So, one bond coupling is like if, uh, if we consider the coupling between proton and deuterium. So, suppose we have a molecule like here we H and D, what is the one bond coupling between them? One connected proton with deuterium. So, in this case the one bond coupling between DH is generally the 42.94 that is 43 hertz. And, uh, as you know that proton, so one bond HH coupling and DH coupling. So, DH coupling uh, is 42, so HH coupling can be quite high and if you look at this is dictated by the gyromagnetic ratio. So, the gyromagnetic ratio of proton is 6.5 times higher than the deuterium. So, in that case J1 HH is 280 hertz. So, now we come to the heteronuclear J coupling. So, that as we discussed in the previous uh, slide that depends upon the hybridization strength. So, let us take some of the example of J coupling between 13 C and proton. So, if it is sp3 hybridized and you see this bond angle is also 109. So, here the J one bond coupling in this case is 125 hertz. Now, if this becomes sp2 hybridized the coupling strength actually increases and it becomes 165 hertz. And when it is sp hybridized like um, then s contribution increasing. So, bond angle is also increasing and that gives us 250 hertz. So, you can look at the methane uh, like here sp3 hybridized where 4 protons are attached. In this case it is uh, 125 hertz and as you uh, increase the S contribution here actually uh, the coupling constant strength increases. Now, other thing that affects the coupling strength is the substituent that can also change the spin spin coupling and that value change can happen in tune of 20 to 30 hertz. Okay, so, just for an example now this was one bond coupling homonuclear and heteronuclear. Now, we will come to the two bond coupling. This two bond coupling proton proton two bond coupling are called geminal coupling and they range somewhere between now 20, minus 23 to 42 hertz 
as we discussed the splitting strength does not depend whether the coupling is negative or positive it is absolute value this is dictated by the orientation of the spin so whether it is negative or positive. So, let us look at some of the uh, two bond coupling geminal coupling and that is dictated by the bond angle between HCH here. So, if you look at here in this case two bond coupling is minus 12.5 hertz the same two bond coupling between these two decrease and that becomes minus 4.3. So, if you look at the bond angle is changing here. Here also two bond coupling because of bond angle change it is 2.5 hertz. So, as we move from here the sign of J coupling is changing and bond angle is changing and that is how it is also decreasing in the magnitude. So, some more example if you look at this molecule here the J bond coupling is minus 6 hertz and as we change so this this becomes like now you you can see it the substituent is also affecting the J bond coupling. So, the difference between this and this are two oxygen are attached and that changes by like 6 hertz or so. Here again one oxygen is attached here replaced uh, carbon is replaced by oxygen and you can look here it is was minus 4.3 and now it has become 5.5. So, almost 10 hertz coupling has changed. Similarly, one can look at here the proton proton coupling between these two change by almost 14 hertz and this is because now here this carbon was replaced by nitrogen and, and the substituent is also affecting and nature of substituent is affecting the coupling strength. So, in this case again if uh, N was replaced by oxygen you can see this coupling has increased and now it is, has become 42.2 hertz. So, the bond angle, the hybridization, the substituents are changing the strength of the coupling that is what um, we, we understood here. Now, three bond coupling uh, between proton and uh, proton proton. So, this is generally is uh, gives the dihedral dependence or phi dependence. So, uh, this phi is very important and Martin Carr plus actually uh, provided an empirical relation which correlates the three bond HH coupling with the phi torsion angle in the, in the peptide bond. So, this has become very very instrumental tool to know the conformation of a protein and if one can calculate the three bond coupling between proton and proton essentially it is like this angle phi torsion angle between two proton. So, here is and H and N I will come to that in next slide. So, if one can determine the uh, phi torsion angle between two planes one from one amino acid and another amino acid you know the dihedral angle and uh, the coupling between this proton and this proton dictates the phi torsion angle by this empirical relation and if you know the three bond coupling you can determine the phi and that gives the, uh, the torsion angle in the protein case. So, A, B, C are constant and they have empirical value for the hydrocarbons. So, like typically A is 7 hertz, B is minus 1 hertz and C is 5 hertz and you can calculate putting at the different phi value how the J varies between 180 degree and uh, 0 degree and it is very small when it is 90 degrees. So, I will come to the next slide to show the variation of the J couplings on the phi. So, here like if if the phi torsion angle between these two planes, so this is a thin plane, if the phi torsion angle is around 60 degree. So, you have a three bond proton proton coupling is 2 to 5 hertz. If it is 180 degree then it is 10 to 16 hertz and if it is 60 degree it is 2 to 5 hertz. So, depending upon how they rotate here you can see the J value uh, the, the J value three bond coupling is changing. Okay, and so one if we can experimentally determine this J value we can calculate the phi torsion angle. Like similarly some more three bond coupling in this molecule the here 1, 2 and 3 these are three bonds. So, the coupling between this and this proton is typically of 4 hertz if you take the same molecule but orientation is different now this becomes 9 hertz. So, if you compare this uh, this um, orientation with this orientation what has changed is the angle and that angle change the J coupling value. Similarly, like if you look at here if J bond between cis 
cis protons and trans protons differs because there is a cis the angle between these phi phi angle is 0 degree in trans it is 180 degree. So, this is 8 to 12 hertz and here it is 14 to 18 hertz. So, now it is clear that even the torsion angle changes the 3 bond coupling in, in case of um, proton proton. And therefore, this as we were discussing this is very important in case of getting the protein conformation. So, in protein suppose if we measure this, this coupling between this proton, this proton which is NH proton and this C alpha H proton. So, here is that torsion angle which is phi if one can measure experimentally we can determine the phi torsion angle. So, this is actually phi torsion angle. So, what we are measuring the coupling constant between these two protons and this is 3 bond, 1 bond, 2 bond and 3 bond. So, by measuring this 3 bond coupling one can determine the phi torsion angle and if you remember your basic Ramachandran plot it is between phi and psi. So, phi plot and psi plot minus 180 to 80 0 0 plus 180. So, one torsion angle just by experimentally determining from the 3 bond coupling of one can know what is the phi and phi can change between um, plus 180 to 180. So, at least from phi you know that what is the phi angle and then one need to determine the, the psi angle then you know the conformation of a protein or a secondary structure of a protein. So, therefore, the 3 bond coupling or the coupling in general is very important to get the molecule uh, molecular structure for a small molecule, a small organic molecule using this coupling one can determine the conform uh, at least partially conformation of a protein because we can determine the directly phi angle uh, from this 3 bond coupling. Now, what I will do today I will give some example to make uh, more clear that how the spectrum looks like. So, I will give you some example of say let us take some of the example like benzyl acetate and we un try to understand how the spectrum looks like and how you can interpret those depending upon the structure. So, if you look at benzyl acetate is like this. So, there is a benzene ring then CH2 is attached to this and then COO and then CH3. So, how many types of proton we have? It essentially, we have a 3 types of proton. One type is coming from like if you are recording on a relatively smaller magnet, we have a like one proton coming from the benzene ring here we have 5 proton 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then second kind of protons we have here 2 kind of proton coming from methylene group here and then third kind of from methyl group here. So, 3 kinds of proton we have. So, therefore, we should have at least 3 peaks in the spectrum and their intensity will vary depending upon uh, how many protons are contributing. So, here we are having contribution from 3 protons, here we are having contribution from 2 proton and here we are having contribution from 5 proton. So, if this is 0 ppm is our TMS then the first one will be like from the um, methyl proton that will be around 2 ppm and this will correspond to 3 proton. Then will be from methylene this is this will be a little bit downfield shifted because it is connected to ring as well as the COO group, CO is electronegative group. So, that will be downfield shifted or higher ppm value shifted and that will correspond to 2 proton. Now, here for um, benzyl ring we have a 5 proton so that will correspond to 5 proton. So, that, that will be the spectrum of benzyl acetate. Now, let us look at some of the some other example. And we take the example of uh, so suppose like a um, say benzyl acetate the carbon spectrum if you look at. So, how many types of carbon now we have ok. So, let us look at the carbon that we have same molecule here let us go back let us look at the carbon molecule. So, we have the carbon here we have a 6 carbons here one carbon here 7 and 8 and 9 carbon. Now, how many types of carbon we have? So, we go back here and we have like here if you look at these these 3 carbons are chemically equivalent these 2 carbons are chemically equivalent this is another one now CH2 is another one and CO is another one. So, uh, and 
yeah and here is the methyl is another one. So, we have 6 type of carbon therefore, we should get 6 peaks and, and where are those? So, the first one we will look at the methyl peak because that will be most uphill shifted or lower ppm value. So, that comes around 20 ppm. So, this is for CH3. Okay. The next one here, the next one is from the methylene group and that will be here. Now, after that what we have is 3 aromatic peak. So, 3 aromatic peak like 2 here then um, so 3 aromatic peaks are coming here, here. So, that, that are quite close here if you look at like uh, these 3, 3 and 4 are quite close and 2 is because 2 is connected to CS2 and all those. So, this will be ortho. So, that is 2 and 1 is carbonyl peak that will be most downfield shifted. So, this is for CO, this is from the aromatic carbon 2 and these are 3 and 4 they are quite close and then we have from CH2 and this is CH3. So, that is benzyl acetate carbon spectrum. Okay. Then we move ahead and take some another example to understand how this spectrum looks like. I will give you and now we have to analyze. Our molecule is suppose C2 H4 Cl and suppose we have a spectrum which is like this here is our 0 ppm and this is our uh, signal coming from the standard um, reference and just suppose we get only one peak. Okay. So, what will be this molecule? Let us define. So, one peak are coming, 4 protons are there, this is for proton spectrum and this comes suppose around 4 ppm. Uh, so, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 something like this. So, what this molecule is? So, now it says that it looks like 4 all protons are in the same environment. So, there are 2 carbons here. 4 protons. So, we will write 4 protons here and all 4 are in the same environment. So, it, it is this molecule right 1 to dichloroethane. Let us take some other example. Suppose uh, our molecule is now C 9 and H 12 and we got this spectrum which is 0 ppm standard and we got here and here and this ppm value is supposed to 0.5 ppm and this one is around say 6.5 ppm. Okay. So, if you integrate here we get ratio of 3 to 1. Now, what this molecule can we solve this? So, two things is, uh, are clear first thing is if something coming around 6.5 that most must be coming from the benzene ring. So, let us write a benzene ring and something coming around 2.5 most likely this is coming from the CH3 uh, or CH2. So, since now there are 12 protons, so we look at where we can uh, exhaust and proton and all 3 like here. So, 6 carbons are exhausted here, we have 3 carbons and then 6 carbons are gone here. So, we, we have actually 6 proton left here. So, now that means we can if we have molecule like this because uh, the methyls are in the same environment. So, therefore, it should be something like this. So, now we have a 3 protons left here and these 9. So, we have 2 kinds of proton one coming from meth, uh, methyl group. So, 9 methyls here and 3 here from the benzene ring. So, therefore, 9 ratio 3 is 1 ratio 3 and their chemical shift position is 2.5 and 6.5 ppm. This is the molecule that that is the spectrum is like this. Next move to next molecule. We have a molecule which is C4, C sorry C4, H10 and O2 and this gives us a spectra here say 0 ppm and this gives us spectra to quietly close and the ppm value is between 3 to 4 ppm and the ratio is 6 to 4 what this molecule is. So, how can we solve it? Now, it looks like that only 2 kind of protons are there. So, this is reference 
and then we have to write it like that. So, 4 carbons are there, so 2 carbons here and since they look quite um, downfield shifted, so probably there is a 2 oxygens here. So, now we have to fill the protons. So, 6 protons are of same chemical environment. So, that can be CH3 and CH3 and then 4 protons are of same kind. So, here will be 4 protons. So, this is the spectrum of this molecule. So, at the moment we are looked at the um, uh, chemical shift only and how to interpret the spectrum and generate the spectrum from a given compound. So, that we looked at. Now, I will give you some examples of the splitting. So, we will try to determine the uh, chemical structure of the compound. So, suppose now we consider the spin spin coupling to determine what molecule is this. So, let us take some example like C3 H7 Cl and we have a spectrum where our reference is at 0 ppm TMS and we get here 2 peaks and here we get a multiplate. like this. So, here the ratio is 1 and this ratio is 6. So, what this molecule could be? So, let us try to understand this. Okay. So, one thing is clear that 6, 6 protons are here, one proton is of this type. So, only two kind of chemically different protons are there okay. and then there is a chlorine group attached to it. So, let us attach a chlorine group, Cl group. So, then two kinds of protons. So, it looks like that and since the value is here, uh, this is around like 1 ppm and this is 2 ppm and this one is 4 ppm and 5 ppm. So, it is very clear that one is methyl proton. So, here is CH3 and another CH3. So, now 6 protons are gone, one proton which is left is this one. Now, this we can explain it. Now, 6 proton will split this into how many? 7 and that ratio one, one can know that what will be the ratio of this splitting. So, one can identify these molecules very easily. For 6 proton it should be 1 is to 6 is to 15 to 20 to 15 to 6 to 1. And these proton will split these, these chemically equivalent 6 protons into this. So, that is why it is doublet. So, these two are equivalent therefore, there should have been one peak if there was no coupling, but because of coupling uh, we, we have a splitting into two and the 6 proton is split this into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is septet. So, next I will give one more example before we uh, try to close up. So, let us have a molecule which is C12, H14 and O4. And the spectrum for this is coming something like this. Here we have a reference compound 0 ppm, then we have something like this and a quartet like this and then we have a singlet like this. And this corresponds to 4 peaks, this corresponds to also 4 peaks and this corresponds to 6 peaks. And the value here comes around say 7 to 8 ppm. Yeah, sorry, 7 to 8 ppm and this is somewhere around 4 ppm and this comes around say 1.5 ppm. So, 1.5 ppm. So, what this compound could be? So, 1.5 is clearly methyl group is there and there are 6 carbons, so probably 2 methyl group are there. Here there is a benzene ring. So, let us try to write it a benzene ring first and two methyls are attached to there. Now, we, we see the four peaks are also there. So, that means now these methyls and there is here also there, there is a something called methylene group. So, probably it looks like, like there is a st structure which will be something like this. because now methylene groups 
will come here that are 4. So, if you look at 2 to 4 this will be 6 and this corresponds to 4 proton. And then you can also explain this splitting because each of these equivalent proton split this into 4 and this will split into 3 this CH2 will split CH3 into 3. So, 6 proton will be splitted into triplet now um, these 4 protons will be splitted into quartet and this will be mostly singlet because this there is no splitting here. So, these are some of the example rest examples you can do in the tutorials. So, we will continue now we have have a good uh, exposure of the chemical shift how to interpret using chemical shift. We also introduced the uh, coupling constant and we looked at how the coupling constant uh, gives the finest structure I mean we learned looking at the splitting pattern and the chemical shift value how we can identify the chemical structure of a molecule. Now we are at a stage going little deeper and understand the quantum mechanical formalism of the coupling constant and then we looked at interpretation of some of those. So I hope uh, these things are clear to you and rest uh, the concepts will be cleared in the tutorial session. So, um, hoping you to see in the next class where we will start with the quantum mechanical description of the uh, coupling. Thank you very much.